Holy crap, drilling vertical concrete is hard. I've done my fair share of drilling masonry, but it's always been brick. I knew the concrete would be tougher, I just didn't understand how much tougher. It is probably pushing my handheld hammer drill to its limit. And this is the big bastard one centimeter, 10 millimeter bit that I need for my Dynabolts. I've probably spent a half an hour drilling those two and just starting on the pilots. And I've got eight of the bastards that I need to put in across the top here. So, mate, I'll take woodwork over masonry work any day of the week. This is not fun. Neighbors probably don't think so either. All right, get back cracking to it. Wow, that was tough going. However, I've got the first four of the eight in the concrete drilled. Those ones should be easier because they're into masonry. I had to end up stepping through four different bit sizes to make my life easier. And even so, that took a long time. Managed to destroy, if I can get it in focus, a couple of bits. That little one in particular. Look at that, completely tipped out. However, it was pretty tough reinforced concrete. I got my pilot holes in and I decided it was easy to reach it from this side. This is the best aerobic workout that I have had in a long time and I ride to work every day. Breather. I mean, actually I'm just letting the drill bit cool down. That's what I'm really doing. It's just the drill needs a break. That does get really, really hot. So apart from taking the brakes to cool it down, I've actually got a second 10 mil drill bit, which I swap out every so often to give it a chance to cool properly. It makes the bits last longer. In fact, I can feel my drill is really hot. It's 30 something degrees today. So I think I'm actually gonna take a full break from this and let everything, including myself, cool down a bit. Might start painting for a little while. That'll be relaxing. I'm six and a half out of eight holes down. Honestly, I'm beginning to think that the 10 mil Dynabolt, eight of them, is well, well, well overkill. And if I'd gone for either just one Dynabolt in each side and half my number of holes, or even gone for thinner Dynabolts, because I'm pretty sure they still would have held the weight, I would be having a much, much better day. It is tough work drilling 50 year old concrete, I'll tell you what. However, I'll get that done on my next day because I am buggered, it's hot, and I want to start to paint these. Obviously, I could install them first and then paint them, but while I've got them down and I've got the time, I'm going to whack a bit of sealant over the top. All right, let's get some undercoat on here and there'll be a nice, relaxing, quiet end to a noisy, dusty, hot day. I really like to utilize the afternoons just as soon as I get home from work for painting. So generally I'll get a project up to a point where it's gonna take me a couple of days to put a few coats of paint on something and I'll spend that 20 minutes, half an hour in the afternoon as soon as I get home from work to knock that over. So on the weekend I can do the more heavy, noisy building stuff. Why am I painting the frames? Because these are actually gonna be exposed on the inside above the garage door and they're gonna be shells. Might fit a beer can or two. Obviously, I'm not painting the flip side because that is where the glue and screws are going to go to hold the panelling on. I'm also not going to show you any of me doing the painting because I'm currently wearing Lycra and no one wants to see that. Well, I've got the first side installed and I've run into what you might call a small technical difficulty. Luckily, my holes lined up pretty well. They're the Dynabolts smacked in and tightened up. However, there is one slight other problem. You may notice that the gap on this side is bigger than the gap on this side. And watch what happens when I press the button. It's not too bad. I should be able to shave that off. But I measured my clearance, I think, over here. And the middle of the garage door is actually higher than the sides. So fortunately, that's not too bad. I've only just miscalculated and I can just uh, get under there and shave off a bit of wood. A 
Here we go. And victory. That took a quite a bit of stuffing about. I tried the chisel, I tried the reciprocating saw, I even used the router, I actually did a chamfer all the way along the edge. It still didn't quite cut it. So then as you saw me, I got the angle grinder with the disc sander pad on it, and that took off the last few mils that I need. Hey, at least it's a nice snug fit now. That in mind, before I put the second one up, I'm going to pre-chamfer that edge and uh, might even paint it too. So that way my second half doesn't give me as much trouble. Massive apologies for the filming in this video, by the way. Working in a dark garage, trying to film through bright light is just really, really challenging. But ah, you get the idea. If I'm lucky, then on this side, that should be enough. If I'm unlucky, then I'm gonna to have to break out the angle grinder sander again. But uh, prevention better than a cure. Let's see how we go. I've got my four Dyna bolts, and just like I did on the other side, we're going to knock these in with the hammer, and then we'll tighten them up with a wrench. First one's of course going to line up. So it looks like the answer is these three are good. This one is off by a few mil. So how I'm going to correct that is I'll get the drill out and I'll make the hole in the wood a little bit bigger. It'll give me a tiny bit of play, but honestly, I've got so many bolts on here, it's overkill. I probably could have got away with one bolt in each. So Making that a little bit looser on the wooden part won't be too much of an issue and much better than making it bigger on the concrete part. Excellent. So I just put a bit of an angle onto that hole and that has allowed me to line this one up. Now, this is actually the easy bit. The way you raise up the wood an inch off the top of the garage door is by bashing those bolts in. Now I've built that in position as good as I can. Time to get the socket wrench and tighten these up. Yeah, that ain't going anywhere. All right, angle grinder again. That'll do. I hate wasting paint and I hate cleaning out the paint trays. So let's do this this way. Now that I've got them all painted up and sealed, the top coat I'm going to put on after I've installed them because it's going to be the same colour as the surrounding area, so I don't really care how messy I need to be up there. Just very quickly marking out where my studs are going to be, and that way I can pre-drill the holes. So when I get up there, all I need to do is drive them in. I know it's not the coolest thing in the world to do, but as a novice, I am still in the habit of reading the instructions on the back of a packet. Even for something as simple as a screw, there is some useful information there. For instance, I was about to go ahead and choose the drill bit for the pilot hole on these 30 mil screws, but they actually have the recommendation on the back, minimum in bed, 20 millimeters to get the correct strength out of it. This is 17 mils, so if I were to use these 30 millers, I'm only going to get a 13 millimeter embed, which is, well, probably a bit too small. Fortunately, I've also got myself some 45s, so we're going to step up to those, and that will give me the security that I want. Okay, now I can mount the first piece. Alright, I've got my Craig Rick cut set up. So I can take about a centimetre, centimetre and a half. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much as long as I do the same cut on both boards to get this not smacking into the garage door when it opens. The trickiest part of using the rip cut, I find, is trying to clamp things down. 
So I've done this fairly unorthodox setup where I don't have any clamps, but I'm pushing against the wall using a stop block at the end, and that'll give me a free sliding motion to run the guide all the way through the cut to the end. I hope. I always struggle with the very last little bit of the cut for whatever reason, using that jig. It does take a little bit of practice to get used to, but there is absolutely no other way, without a table saw, I could have made a beautiful, long, even cut like that. So, is working, just needs more practice on my end. There we go. Nice, check that out. Not bad for no table saw. I also lopped a little bit off the end too. Resealed those, I've cut the second one the same centimeter and a half, and now we can try to reattach it. Glad I didn't use glue the first time. <sighs> Novice DIY work. Very much trial and error. All right, let's test again. That sounded better. Let's take a peek up top. There we go, so you can see that's where it hit last time, just on that really high bit. But now we are clear. Before I can get this last panel on, I've got to correct a fairly major issue. Apologies for the sun. Bit hard to see there, but that is far from straight. It is on a really bad angle. So what I need to do is pull this inwards and then I'm going to screw it into the beam behind as a temporary measure before I get my coach bolts and I put them in there. Now they're actually for security more than stability so this can't be pushed in but I've got to go to Bunnings and pick some of those up. My solution is going to be using a big ass pipe clamp and this corner of the brick wall as leverage. Let's see if that will work. All right, let's take a close up look at how I'm going to fix this problem. So you can see in here, that is twisted like a mofo. At the top, it's where it should be, but down the bottom, I've got about a centimeter and a half that I need to correct. And hopefully, by giving this a bit of a crank, I can make this disappear. Beautiful. Get that clamp off and see if it holds. Bloody well should. Ah, nice. And this UAG case has saved my ass yet again. I don't want to count the number of times this bloody phone has fallen because I've knocked it over with a tool. Urban Armor Gear, check them out. Bomb proof. My straightening out efforts seem to have worked really well. I'm very, very happy with the improvement that that has made. Now let's see if we get this panel on the first time instead of the third time. Yeah, don't like that gap too much. I blame it on the uneven concrete ceiling. So what I've done is just quickly cut out a shim and I'm going to glue that bugger up in there to try and hide the gap before I paint it. I got my shim in, but there's still a tiny gap at the top which I just want to bog up. I don't have any spackle. So that is sand sawdust, I should say, out of the back of my sander. Glue. Yeah, about that much. And we just Make a paste. Cool. All right, I'm going to shove some of this in the crack. And a bit of 60 grit sandpaper will hide all sins. Couldn't really film up here because it's a bit tricky. 
but you'll see there's my shim that I've just cut and sanded off and then further up I've just got that homemade bog once I'll get some paint over there you won't be able to notice at all well at least no one but me will awesome we are nearly done with this barrier painting makes for really boring video so I haven't bothered here however is the inside of the barrier which is now a lovely shelf and it's all painted black let's go make the strata happy by doing the outside cottage cream that's probably been sitting on the garage floor for a couple of months look at the color of it it will be cream it's going to take some mighty good stirring if i haven't shown you this thing before it is effing brilliant it's an edge painter and my dad gave it to me fantastic thing i'm going to use it for the very top part of the uh, door there should get it done in a few seconds literally hardest part be moving the step stool So I've got some of these lovely big coach screws and they're the last thing I'm going to need to do to finish off this project. Just going to whack them up in there. Well, that brings this garage door project to a close. Turned out pretty nicely, even if there wasn't a lot of woodwork there. More DIY, really. Next week, however, we will be hitting the tools on an actual woodworking project, and I'm really excited to put this one forward as it's the first thing I've actually designed with plans. See you then.